It has been a while since I posted about neurofeedback and I need to tell you about alpha theta training. Alpha theta training is different than beta SMR training. So remember videos and videos ago, I showed you what we do on the software that we use is eager um, where we're watching your brain waves live and you're playing a video game with your mind and your eyes are open. Well, alpha theta training is a training used in neurofeedback that is an eyes closed training. So you still have an electrode on your head and probably a couple of electrodes on your ears as well as one for the ground on your ear and your eyes are closed you have headphones on and you're hearing four sounds you hear a bing a bong a babbling brook and an ocean and with these four sounds they are guiding you into a theta state so this is an alternative for hypnosis. Um, the long story short of alpha theta training is it allows people to get into their unconscious mind. You won't be aware of this um, and resolve all sorts of issues that your brain is not willing to allow you to resolve consciously. So this is really, really great for people with addictions that they don't understand and for people with trauma. Um, there have been studies done with veterans and other people with trauma um, and it has shown efficacy. And so um, all you really do is close your eyes and you listen to these sounds and we will guide you through some different affirmations to say. So if you're using it for smoking cessation, for example, it would be, I can manage my anxiety without having a cigarette or vaping. The next time I want to vape or have a cigarette, I will choose to calm or cope in another way instead, etc. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different waveforms again, just to let you know uh, more specifics about what we do in alpha theta training. Hang tight. Okay, do you remember this? I was showing you what the waveforms were doing in another video. So just to refresh your memory, delta waves fire between zero and four hertz. Um, and so this is one second. And so you basically just count the peaks of the waves and that will tell you what the speed is. So delta waves are zero to four hertz. Theta waves are four to seven. Alpha waves are around eight to 12. Beta waves are 13 to upwards and um, whatever and gamma waves are between 25 or 30 on up they're the fastest um, and so what are we doing in alpha theta training uh, we are using four different filters we are telling delta please don't happen and we're telling beta please don't happen delta is your sleepy wave so we don't want you to fall asleep your eyes are closed, the room is probably dark, it's relaxing, so we don't want you to fall asleep. And we don't want beta to happen where there's higher anxiety, muscle tension, or just more multitasking or higher level working, decision making, planning, executive function in general. So we're inhibiting delta and beta, and we are rewarding theta and alpha. What do theta and alpha do? Well, if delta is sleep, and theta is just a bit faster than delta, what theta does is it's our unconscious rest. And so this is when we are daydreaming, drifting. If you've ever been like watching TV and you just kind of like feel yourself nod, that nodding feeling is you slipping into theta. It's unconscious. And theta allows you to dream. Um, and so it's really important for you to get into REM sleep so that you can dream. Alpha, a bit faster than theta, is what allows you to consciously experience the sensation of rest and relaxation. Anytime you know you're chill, it's because you're operating in alpha. And so in alpha theta training, what we do is when your eyes close, we know your alpha increases by about 50% or it should. Um, and so we know that you probably already have a good amount of alpha, but we're rewarding the theta as well to tell your brain that it is safe to go into a theta dominant state. And we look for in our training screen, which I'll show you in a second, we look for theta crossover. And so we look for theta power to become higher than alpha power so that we know that your brain is unconsciously processing and dealing with whatever it is that you went in thinking about into that training. And so was it to resolve your trauma and feel safe again or be able to have loving relationships again or sleep again or get rid of that substance or that toxic relationship that you're in whatever it might be so um, again we're rewarding alpha and theta waiting for them to cross over and we are inhibiting 
delta and beta so that you don't fall asleep and so that you don't um, overthink. Um, I do want to say that we have a lot of clients that feel vulnerable when they do alpha theta training um, because their eyes are closed and they just feel like they're always about to fall asleep and for people who have a hard time relaxing that can be kind of nerve-wracking because you're putting the body in a relaxed state and it almost makes the body feel strange. Other people absolutely love it. They sit there, they feel relaxed for the first time in weeks. I have a client who has mastered the sounds who can actually will for the rain sound to come and will for the bing and bong to come on um, and she knows how to do that because she's done it so long. Um, and then lots of resolution of trauma as well. So I'm going to show you some of the training screen that I see when we're doing it, just in case you're a provider or you're interested. I'm going to turn my screen around. Okay. So again, I'm using Eager here. So I'm going to go like in the middle of her training. And we're going to watch what her waves are doing. Okay. So... These right here are alpha waves, and you can see wait for it. This is one second, and so we are counting the number of peaks that happen in a second in order to know what the frequency is of this wave. So these guys here, see how they're slower? There's a slow one, slow one, slow one. Um, so that was a delta wave that had alpha and beta riding on top. Um, but this guy right here, theta, theta, there's alpha. You see the difference between alpha and theta? Just a little bit more space between the theta wave and the alpha wave there. There's a good one. That's a good theta wave. And so she's in theta right now processing something but these are millions of neurons firing at pz all at once and so you're still going to see um, some beta riding on top of a theta wave you're going to see alpha arriving there's distinct alpha right here this is she came back to consciousness and she's just experiencing um, relaxation again there's alpha big alpha big alpha good she came out of that unconscious state that she was in whatever that process was and she won't have a recollection of whatever she processed see how it's starting to flatten out again and now she's going back there's theta theta there's alpha again alpha 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 there's theta theta alpha's transitioning into theta there's a little bit of alpha and we go so as your provider, we watch the screen. I'll zoom out a little bit. So this is the theta that we're, five to eight hertz, this is the theta that we are um, rewarding. This is the alpha that we're rewarding, the delta and the beta. I'm sorry, we're inhibiting the delta and the beta. I didn't say that, but um, that's why you see reward, reward, inhibit, inhibit here because we're telling the brain, don't sleep and don't process too much stuff or get anxious or let muscles get in the way. Just chill in a conscious and unconscious way. So what are you doing to my brain? Um, I have a client ask and I say, just like in the other neurofeedback that we're doing, um, if the brain receives feedback and it, do it doesn't believe that it's relevant or helpful or going to help it optimize, it simply won't take that feedback. Um, the electrodes that we put on your scalp and on your ears are simply reading information. They're reading the electrical activity in your brain. They're not doing anything to you. So if you have heightened sensory sensitivity and when you have an electrode on your scalp, you feel like it feels electrical, that's just anxiety making you feel that way. So rest assured, we're not doing anything to you. Um, if you change, it's a result of your brain believing that that's the most adaptive thing for you. So if you have more questions about alpha theta training, let me know. Um, the only other one that I'll 
answer because I've been asked before um, is does alpha theta training require me to come in twice or three times a week like beta SMR video game training? No, it does not. You can do it once up to however many times you want, um, but we see people experiencing resolution after three to ten alpha theta trainings just depending on how severe the issue is. Oftentimes somebody will come in and they'll want their affirmations to be about one thing when they do it and then um, after they kind of resolve that thing they want to go in and um, process something else and so as always this should also be combined with psychotherapy um, because it's just good practice. So enjoy! I hope that helps you. I'll see you later.